in the new category, the museum's important structure. We call it Amiga, as you will know. Part of the encounter during the past 10, 20 years, we encountered 20 cases of pure Amiga movements, not the lesions that is part of the media temporal structures. The pure Amiga lesion is in your entity, and I'm going to introduce you see it today. And the safest approach to this lesion are through the transtemporal approach. This is our conclusion, and we are talking about this today. Uh, everybody know the amygdala. The amygdala is uh, part of the limbic system and uh, anatomically from a point of view of our surgeon is very important because it is adjacent to the optic tract and the musculature of every system. Therefore, uh, it is a great way for a surgeon if you want to avoid the complications if you know about the anatomy very well. Here I will show you the A is amygdala, the HC is the hippocampal head. There are very near to each other, and also they are near to the parhippocampal areas, and uh, these structures are involved in many cases, but in selective cases, the amygdala is only involved, and we should be able to remove the amygdala only and save the hippocampus if we want to have a good memory and uh, temporal function for the patient. This is again amygdala, and pass through these beams. Uh, we have uh, 20 cases. We have uh, 103, 40 cases of medial temporal tumor, but uh, 20 cases of them were pure amygdala lesions. The diversity of lesion there was DNET, FCD, ligandogramma, carbonoma, parasitic astrocytoma, ependymoma, and uh, we, operate, we have been operating over two cases with the enlarged amygdala, only enlarged amygdala imaging, and it proved that they are a kind of FCD. This is a mesial temporal lobe tumor. You see the extent of the lesion, and we do the plastic surgery for that. I pass through the nuclei. And you see this is the post op image. We remove up to the quarter hymnal cistern here. And this is not a mesial tumor, this is a plastic mesial temporal tumor. This is another case of the amygdala and hypocomb tumor together. This is not, again, the amygdala tumor, and I will show you a brief of this movie to see. This is the classic, but uh, why I choose this case? Because the lateral vein was abnormal in this case. You see the lateral vein goes anteriorly, not posteriorly. We had three of these cases, and you should respect this vein. If you take this one during the lobectomy, you will encounter the temporal is fine. Neurologic morbidity. This is a very rare case. The anomaly of lateral vein, and this is not an amygdala tumor. I pass through this. This is the classic amygdala tumor that I want to introduce in this session. This is a young man with epilepsy CPS. This is a tumor that is bounded inside the amygdala membrane. The tumor in the left side, the patient memory is good and there is no language problem. Therefore, the amygdala rejection for full epilepsy and oncology control is mandatory and in the setting of saving the memory and language function because we are in the left. This is the classic operation that we propose for these cases. We go through a transcircal approach, reach to the, this is a transcircal approach, finding the ventricle, this is the hypocampus. When you see the hypocomb, you go above the roof. This is the roof of the ventricle. The roof, above the roof you go, and uh, we see the tumor inside the amygdala. It is very important we are aware above the amygdala is the globus pallidus, that's our sanction in the other. In the medial side, you have the lateral vein, the Rosenthal vein, and the PTA and anterior portion. You have to be very careful not to injure this structure. This is a classic amygdalectomy, and we reach the amygdala system. You see the midbrain, and every day was selected there. And the close, there is nothing touch in the left temple. Therefore, the cytologic pro prognosis would be excellent. This is the trajectory we choose. This is the early post of CT. This is the post of MRI, and the total amygdala rejection is a bicompal save. And I passed through the other cases. I said this is another case. This is a ganglion glioma inside the amygdala. 
may he receive full sight of the glorious Father, and have Christ in the way to have hope. The patient care we have for us is often near the of the We do the same for her. This is another case. This is a DAPT, a posterior amygdala. All of them were on the left side. This provides me for me. All of our region on the left. This is a DAPT. This is a post of imaging. We reject the posterior amygdala here, up to the rear cystia, and the hippocampal system. This is a carnaloma there. I pass through this. This is, again, a carnaloma on the medial side. This is the uncaused carnaloma affecting the third nerve muscle. And this is the rejection after that. We enter to the body just because of the PR brain. We know the carnaloma makes hypnosis, and if the hypnosis is a matter of truth, they will be possible. Therefore, I pass through these cases, and this is the two cases with enlarged amygdala, no tumor. But the patient suffer from long-lasting medical refractory epilepsy. An evaluation reformed enlarged amygdala. And because the neurologist advised to do the surgery for her, we do a surgery, I pass through that. This is the end of the surgery, this is the hypocampal. We remove the dentate virus and the hypocampal virus and the whole amygdala, but save the hypocampus. And I say to the patient, there is a possibility of another <coughs> surgery if you are not really controlled by the surgery, I have going to do another surgery. This is the enlarged amygdala cases, and I pass, this is another case. And uh, for the last, this is the another case. Therefore, we introduce here the amygdala region to set aside from the medial central tumor. They are usually benign tumor need surgical resection. And the surgery should be aware of the pitfalls and the risk there and the anatomy where 